You're watching a free sample video from Teacher's Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. When we want to take derivatives, we've looked at a couple different ways of doing that. Most commonly, people have seen the power rule at this point. Um, what we're going to see, though, in the next few slides is that there are other techniques for taking derivatives. And these get into some pretty complicated rules that many people memorize as they go into higher calculus studies. So the first thing is it says we're going to look at the chain rule. There are many rules for differentiation depending on the function. One method, the chain rule, applies to a function within a function or a composition of functions. So if I have f of x is equal to f of g of x, then if I want to use the chain rule, here's how it works dy dx is equal to dy over du times du over dx. And here's an example. Let's say my function is 1 plus x squared quantity to the fifth. So I have two functions going on. My first function is x to the fifth, and my second function that's going on is 1 plus x squared. That's a composition of functions, where one fu function is the input into the other function. So to calculate a derivative using the chain rule, what I'm going to do is a substitution using the letter u. I'm going to let u represent my inside function, or let u be 1 plus x squared, and then y would be equal to u to the fifth. Pause real quick and make sure that makes sense to you because it's called a u or dummy substitution. Um, that inside now, instead of being called 1 plus x squared, it's just called the letter u. So when I go to do the derivative, dy dx would be the derivative of u squared over du times the derivative of 1 plus x squared dx. And the derivative of u to the fifth would be 5u to the fourth multiplied by the derivative of u. Derivative of u with respect to x is instead of uh, x squared, it's going to be 2x. And then if I simplify that, I'll have 10xu to the fourth. Now, don't leave your answer there. It's a common mistake is that students will leave u in their answer. They did the derivative. They think they're done. But keep in mind, u was something that I introduced. It wasn't in the original problem. So to do this correctly, I need to get rid of that u. Or I'll go back and instead of having 10xu to the fourth, more appropriately, it would be 10x times the quantity 1 plus x squared to the fourth. There are similar rules that happen with products and quotients. On your test, you're going to want to look out for trick answers. If you're asked to take a derivative and you notice it's a composition of functions or a product of functions or a quotient of functions, and if you don't have these rules memorized, you're just going to want to know that there is a rule and there's probably going to be a trick answer presented for you. If I'm asked to do the derivative of a product, the product of f times g, I would do f times the derivative of g plus g times the derivative of f. It's like the first function as it is times the derivative of the second plus the second function as it is times the derivative of the first. Or if I want to do a quotient, let's say I want to do the quotient of f divided by g, I would do g times the derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g divided by g squared. So again, it's not just doing derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, and dividing them. That would be a trick answer. The correct way to do a derivative of a quotient is on your screen. Another type of standard technique for taking derivatives, derivatives is if you have a logarithmic function. Here we're looking at the natural log. And then also we'll see what happens if you have an exponential function. The derivative of the natural log of absolute value of x is 1 over x. And so uh, looking ahead, if you're working with an integration problem, which of course is where you're doing this backwards, if you see 1 over x, you know the antiderivative is the natural log of absolute value of x. Back to derivatives, the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. That's kind of cool. And the last one, the derivative of a to the x is equal to a to the x times the natural log of a. Again, these are rules that people might memorize as they go into higher level um, calculus studies. For you, you're going to want to be aware that there are some kind of trick answers. Like if you're given that quotient, a trick answer would be just the quotient of the derivatives, which is not correct. Now moving on, there's trigonometric derivatives as well. So on your screen, you'll see that derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of tangent is secant squared, derivative of secant is secant x tangent x, the derivative of sine negative 1 of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Down the right-hand column, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant x, derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x cotangent x, and the derivative of tangent negative 1 would be 1 over 1 plus x squared. So again, these are rules that you could memorize, or just be aware that there are some uh, unique properties for uh, higher level derivatives. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. 
For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.